third grade. These assignments are for the week of March 30th, 2020, so bear with me. I know it seems like a lot, and it's because I only see you guys usually once a week, so I combine two lessons per, uh, per period when I see you guys in person. So I'm basically doing the same thing um, at home while I'm, we're doing remote learning together. So you have two lessons this week. I'm gonna go through them as quickly as possible, but with as much direction as possible so you all know what to do and are a little bit clearer. So I uploaded the lessons as a PDF and as a PowerPoint presentation. You can download either one of those attachments to see the work and the slides clearer with the directions. But some of the worksheets and the actual attachments I will show you, they are in the PowerPoint slides. So you can either print those out or you can um, uh, write them, write your responses on a separate sheet of paper or type them up. You guys have been so creative. So um, I am open to whatever way you guys choose. All right, so the first lesson is comparing climates. As it says in the task, you read through the slides and complete the assignments. You can print out the worksheets or record the answers um, and record the answers there or on a separate sheet of paper on your notebook. Please paste them out. Since there are so, uh, I would say four to five assignments this week, try to do one assignment a day so that you do not feel overwhelmed. I am available during school hours, Monday through Friday, 8.20 to about, sometimes I usually go up until four o'clock. So if you guys need me to respond to you, it's, it's up until those points and then we will have to speak the next day. So it says as meteorologists helping the um, WPO, we need to figure out which island's weather is best for the orangutans, not just for one day or one month, but for many years is here what word describes the weather in a place over a long period of time I want you to think about the answer to the question it starts with the letter c think about what word describes weather the same weather pattern that you see in a specific area okay all right it says here we'll be investigating the climates of the islands but first we'll investigate other climates which will help us understand similarities and differences in climates around the world. So similar means same, differences mean, of course, different. Here we have Ark Island, Blue Island, Creek Island, and we've seen some of that in the past few weeks when we've studied um, these uh, geographic locations together. So we learned that Boston and San Francisco have very different climates. When we read in the digital text, what's going on with the weather? I wonder if these are the only places with different climates. I don't think so. We live in a big world, a big country, right? So many other different places with different climates. Let's find out. So it says here, we're gonna find out if there are other places with very different climates by using this reference book to compare climates around the world. Remember, going back to the lesson title, which is, comparing climates. What are the differences and the likenesses of different climates around the world? So we're going to access the digital text in Amplify World Weather Handbook. Remember, I'm going to I post the directions on how to access the digital text. Please pay very close attention. So, make sure that you always go to the website that is underlined apps learning.amplify.com um, forward slash elementary for the world weather text and for other texts. Please be reminded, you may want to use an incognito browser, meaning you want to also, you want to think about the browser you're using. Are you using Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer? Try any one of those browsers to see if you can access the text. I accessed the text a few times and it works, so just be patient. If it's not working on Firefox or uh, or on Internet Explorer, try Google Chrome, okay? So when you log in, you log into Amplify. This is your username. This is your password. 
and then you go and select student book one, World Weather Handbook, okay? Now it says here, you're gonna turn to pages eight to nine in World Weather Handbook, and I'll complete an example. First, I'll read the text about Acumal, Mexico. So you're gonna go and access those pages when, as soon as you enter into the digital text space, okay? It says here, first I'll record the location name, then I'll think about temp temperature-related seasons using the temperature bar graph. So if you look closely, what the directions want you to do is pick any location in the World Weather Handbook, uh, handbook and you're gonna write the name of that location, and then you're going to either check that it has no cold or warm season or it has a cold or warm, and warm season, and you just follow the, the directions on the page. Then it says, um, I will use the text in the precipitation bar graph to think about precipitation-related seasons. So um, you're thinking about here, you check off, does that location have a wet or dry season or no wet or dry season? So you pick the box and then you fill in your explanation as to why, okay? Don't want to give the answers away to you, but I want you guys to see that you, I want you to try your very best to use the text to answer those questions. All right. And it says specifically, use the reference book to complete pages 48 and 49 in your notebook. Okay. So in the PowerPoint slide, um, I am attaching those pages so that you print them out there at the very end of the PowerPoint slide. Okay, it says different places have different climates. And we know that by connecting the text that we read about um, uh, San Francisco and Boston climates last week. It says we use 30 days of temperature data to make a line plot of our local weather. In order to think about our local climate, we need more local temperature data. So I search for the local average high temperature for every month of the year. Pay very close attention to how I did this because this is more technology that we're entering into here, mixed in with some science, okay? Now it says I'll use this data tool to make a bar graph of our local high temperatures. How do you get to the data tool? It says you have to go to the apps page that I sent to you earlier, but I attached the link again on this slide. You're gonna go to weather and climate, right? With the orangutan picture hanging there. And then you're gonna click on number four, which is local temperature graph. So once you get there, it says you can press play um, here to see how the model works. Sorry for the, um, the typo there. So it's here, you can press play. And it says this is the local temperature graph tool. This data tool, can be used to make a bar graph of our local average high temperatures by month. So you, every time you click on a month, right, you type in any day and on the bar graph, you'll see how, what the temperature would be like or, um, what, and what the precipitation, what the temperature would be like on that day. Would it be higher? Would it be lower? It'll show you every time you um, uh, click on the month and the day. So play around with that a little bit. Then it says, think about the answers to these questions. Does our local climate include a hot season and a cold season? If so, when are they? Can you find a place in the reference book that has temperature-related seasons similar to ours? So when you think about our climate, boys and girls, in New York City, does it have a hot season and a cold season? And do we see this reoccurring like every year? If so, what other places have similar climates to ours? That's what they're asking here. 
Does our local climate include a wet season and a dry season? If so, when are they? Can you find a place in the reference book that has precipitation related seasons similar to ours? Okay, so wet season and dry season and hot and cold. Okay. Now for this test, it says after we after we recommended Creek Island for the Orangutan Reserve, we received new data for January. And it showed that January was much colder than August. And we can see that here on this slide. As you can see, January has more marked markups of colder temperature than in August. So the next task here in on page 50, and that is also going to be attached to your PowerPoint slide at the very end, says, let's look at the data again and see if we can figure out more about Creek Island's weather in the years ahead. So what they want you to do is basically look at the diagram and answer those questions. If you need any help with the questions, please let me know. I'm going to move on because there is more to cover here. So this is the same. I've highlighted where you have to answer the question. Now it says, over the past few weeks, we have learned a lot about weather patterns and how to use them to predict the weather. Some of you may have heard people mention climate change. That This means the climate or typical weather based on many years of data is changing around the world. It is getting warmer in some places and colder in, some, in others. In some places, extreme weather and natural hazards are happening more. Now you know how to use data to describe the climate so you can pay attention to the weather here and in other places and decide if it seems to be the result of climate change. Okay. So this is lesson number two, okay, which is evaluating evidence about climate. So we're basically taking the lesson that we just reviewed about comparing climates and trying to use evidence from that lesson in order to explain more about climates in different locations and to find the best climate for the orangutans in this reserve. So remember the question that we're investigating. How can we predict what the weather in a place will be like for many, uh, like many years from now? Remember, when we are migrating these orangutans from one location to the other, we're gonna make sure that we're making the best choice for them possible. You'll use what you learned about local climate to predict what you'll be wearing and doing on the day you turn 18, um, which will be if you guys are about So maybe in about eight or nine years. Um, so that will be almost 2030. And um, this is a visualization activity. You should each find your birthday month on the graph, but keep it to yourself for now. You are, uh, we're not together as a class, so of course you'll keep the information to yourself. Now, the direction says here, you need to go back to the acts uh, to the data tool, and this time you are going to go to um, number five, which is um, where you can find the information about um, the month and the temperature and precipitation there. So it says here that you need to find the month you were born, and on the graph for the local temperature and precipitation, and visualize what you'll be wearing on your 18th birthday. And you draw a picture of that. So um, you will use that diagram to draw the picture of what you'll be wearing. Maybe it's cold, so you'll be wearing a sweater. Draw yourself with a sweater or a hat or maybe shorts or maybe a t-shirt. And you're going to use your local weather graphs to visualize and draw. Now it says, remember, we want to figure out which island will continue to have the best weather for the orangutans for many years to come. We'll look at new evidence from the islands today. We have more evidence, you guys, from WPO, the organization. It says, for comparing one place to another and for predicting what the weather will continue to be. 
Okay, so the strong evidence is measured in the same way meteorologists measure. Weak evidence measured in a different way than meteorologists measure. So if you're using weak evidence, you're basically practicing uh, not using um, a scientific measuring tool to like a rain gauge to measure how much rainfall is coming in a location, but you're using bowls, right? And trying to determine how much rain a place is getting by filling up the bowls. But scientists use, um, and meteorologists, they use uh, a thermometer with the F for Fahrenheit. And for predicting what the weather will continue to be, one month, one month of data and one day of data. So one month of data is strong evidence because you have plenty of information to scan when you're trying to figure out what the weather in that location will look like. One day of data is not gonna tell us a lot of, give us a lot of information. So it says here, the evidence on the top gives the temperature range in June 2010, and the evidence on the bottom shows the average monthly temperatures in 2010. So just look at the graph carefully and the uh, caption above it. Same here, what does the evidence on the top allow us to predict? What does the evidence on the bottom allow us to predict? Think about the answers to this question. Remember, prediction is like an educated scientific guess based on the evidence that you have in front of you. Which piece of evidence would make a stronger argument for the island that would have the best weather for orangutans in the future? Why? Okay, so... Um, Look at the graphs and look at the captions and determine which which piece of evidence is stronger for us to use as to why we're making the decision to move the orangutans to a specific place. Hope that makes sense to you guys. I know it's a lot, but I'm cheering for you and I'm here for you all throughout the week. So do not worry. You're not doing this alone. One month of data can help us predict the weather in the next few days, but it does not mean the place will be that way every month. One year of data helps us predict helps us predict future weather because the weather is one year uh, in one year is close to what the weather will be every year. This is a place this is a place's climate. Here's your evaluating evidence new evidence chart based on what we saw. And the last task here is you're going to get 11 cards with evidence about island, about the islands, plus the strong and the weak cards. Um, this set includes some evidence we've already seen. So if you read the blue carefully, it says, I have attached the cards at the bottom of the slides, the PowerPoint slides. You can print them out if you can, or if you cannot, it's okay. You can read through them on the screen. And then you can um, fill out the sheet, which is next, okay? So discuss the sort uh, the cards and sort them into strong and weak categories, okay? So you can sort them by writing strong side and weak side on a piece of paper in your notebook. Sort the cards by writing strong evidence on one side and weak evidence on the other side. So if you sort them, then you can fill out the chart and evaluate that evidence which pieces of evidence were the strongest, which were the weakest, and explain. And it says complete the notebook page. So you can do that on a separate sheet of paper or you can print out the paper if you can and upload it into Google Classroom. Okay, you have your claims and you have a question here. So read through that carefully so that you can be better supported. So when scientists make arguments, they need to have enough information to choose a claim and they need strong evidence to make the argument convincing. Let's see if we're missing any evidence from our strong evidence card that we might need to make our arguments convincing, okay? In the next lesson, 
We'll look at some new evidence and then write our final arguments for the Wildlife Protection Organization. Boys and girls, where are we going to relocate the orangutans? You are going to help me because you are my fellow scientists, meteorologists, and zoologists. Love you guys, and I will talk to you soon.